like a heart attack Fast fatal heart impact Past painful scars In fact I blast tasteful bars And pass I back up my actions Fact don't ask Grab reactions Jacked attack with every word Then act with class As they hear me snap I got nothing to lose Cause I fought and felt the bruise Now I'm not the one confused Call the shots and they produce I ain't boss I'm finally loose Pick a new silver excuse I need the views to boost me Through a new abuse of being used Everybody wants a piece now Y'all can rest in peace now You're dead to me so peace out Remember you're discreet now Get ready for defeat Alrighty, hello, hello, everybody. This is Kiru Show here, and now, when we last left off with this series, a few events have been going on. In the last part, Deku finally was able to succeed in his task. Train Momoye Yorozu for UA. Along the way, a few things happened. And while Deku, he did pick up a few extra students to train, this did help out some other people who were going along with the training already. Now, afterwards, with that being said, Deku, he was given one for all. And in the last part, Mr. Yairuzu approached Deku about being his fighter for the Kengen Annihilation Tournament. Deku had to get things approved from his uncle, Ryan. However, Ryan, who is now the head of the Kyrie clan, he wholeheartedly approved of this request. Since not only does this give Deku and him a rematch, this is actually a place Deku would go to already. And the fact that he can embarrass Deku as he does think in the King and Annihilation tournament, his first one in fact, this would show how superior he is. That's what Deku does think. His uncle Ryan, to him, is a very cold and calculating man, who, along with being unstable, he's also just very hard to approach and have a co casual conversation with. Now, with that, you did also have currently. Deku and all the girls, they did go out to get something to eat. As Deku, he eventually did arrive home, and he was thinking. Currently, right now, he's lying down in bed. UA, they're going for their tryouts, or whatever it is, tomorrow. And All Might, he really wanted Deku to go. Well, it is good that he does have a way out of the Kyrie clan by being a hero, he knows he'll always be attached to his family. And then there's even right now. He's almost 20 years old. And he still lives with his family. His younger sister and his parents. Granted, being here, it gives him plenty of time to train with and be around other curates and even his dad. But at the same time... It's starting to get a little bit weird. The strain Deku has between his mother, his sister, and the rest of his Curie family, there's that. Well, Deku can talk to and socialize with his father, yeah. The man himself is always very busy. And Deku, he does decide to think. He does have some money from the inheritance his grandfather gave him. And even then, he's going to be getting paid by Mr. Yenirozu. He's going to be paid a hefty sum. And Deku, while he doesn't want to underestimate the King and Annihilation matches, he kind of is. His uncle, yeah. They do usually come out on top. But even then, that is still a bit of a problem. This idea of going into these matches, this idea of trying to be on his own, be alone, it's something new to him. While he was technically by himself and out in the world for those five years, he was still with mentors, with teachers, with tutors. And to put it in a way, this would be a way of isolating himself from his family. He feels like he'd be excommunicating himself from the Kyrie clan. 
if he moves out. But even then, with what's going on with Ryan, if he does try to challenge him and face him already, whenever he turns 21, then still, he'll be excommunicated anyways. If he does at least take this measure first, he can avoid anything happening further down the line. And Deku, he does decide to do this. As the next day, he does actually go to UA. And everybody, they were kind of surprised to see him. Whenever Deku walked in, a lot of people were giving him a stink eye. Mainly because, while there are usually men who do try to come here since it's not technically an all-girls school, they do have males attending the school and even classes for them, so the facilities are relatively the same. It's just the hero course that would be different. Because I don't think people usually understand when they do female AUs like that. There would still be guys in general studies and support course classrooms. Even the business classrooms, if I'm correct. They just wouldn't have quirks, or they'd be quirkless. Anyways, just something I thought about. Now. Deku, when he did show up, he was actually sitting down in the back row. Since he didn't really have a school listed for his education, that was something that was tricky. And Deku did have to just put down the name of a few tutors that he's gone under. And after at least going on to the rest of the portion where he does fill it all out, he does submit it. As whenever people do see him walk away, there are some who do actually look at him and know who he is. As we do cut to outside, where Deku, he is staying there and waiting. So he's apparently going to be here in this one area. And right now, he's kind of underdressed since everybody else is in track suits and workout clothing. Meanwhile, Deku, he's just in a pair of jeans, a belt, and a black t-shirt. Okay. This is going to be pretty bad. That being what Deku does think. As he does step forward to the front of the line, towards where the outer wall is, he actually does get ready. People watching as he does start to take off his shirt and shoes. As a girl would come running up to him and ask him exactly what he's doing. As whenever Deku actually is going to turn around, the girl she just stare at him confused. As a lot of people do start remarking on that guy. He's got so many scars. And Jesus Christ, he looks like he's chiseled out of stone. Now, the girl before she can even really continue further, you did actually have where two people did come running up. As Bakugo and Kirishima, the two girls, they came running up asking him if he's really going to do it. He's really going to try and get in the UA. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. am. Might as well, right? Besides, this will give me a good opportunity to smash some robots. Never really done that before. Mainly Kyrie just like to train on each other. So this will be a big improvement. Something I can smash and break. Now, the girl, she didn't want to start talking more. However, when she did ask if these two know this guy, they both turn around telling her, yeah, they do. And Deku, he does actually step forwards, asking if she happens to be an Ingenium, or, well, from the Ingenium family. Her very surprised. Yes, I am. Oh. Interesting. It's a pleasure to meet you. Deku wouldn't actually bring out his hand, talking about how he's a Zuku Kure. And the moment she went to go out to her hand and hear Kure, she knew who these people were. She knows because her brother, sadly, has encountered the succubus. Or, in a simple way to say it, Deku's aunt, who I have not mentioned for very good reasons. Now, I'll make some jokes about her later. Don't worry, they'll, they'll come by. Anyways, with that out of the way, you do actually have, well, Ida, or whatever you want to call her. She is very concerned. She's been warned to stay away from Akure. And then there's him. From what she's heard, they're insane, crazy, and intense. 
but he's calm and relatively normal. So she does actually just politely decline shaking his hand, talking about how she knows his family's reputation, before going to walk away. And everybody, they actually are staying in line ready. Deku, he's sitting there, or staying there more like it, in nothing but a pair of jeans and a belt. And multiple females all around him, along with even some males Deku does see in the audience, they are ready. Deku and them all charging in, wherever they do say go. And many people, they actually are staring right at Deku. They're watching as this guy's running headfirst towards a group of robots. And one of them, they're just watching. Not too sure what he's really able to do. As whenever the, some, this supposed someone was about to go start talking shit, they did actually see Deku immediately throw out his fists, smashing into a robot, before bringing out his other hand and starting to just rip the thing into two. The moment people saw that, they thought he had a quirk. And Deku, he did actually start to do one simple thing. He activated his removal to give himself a boost in speed and not only strength. As you do actually have in the class or the observation room, my bad. They're going over everything. And multiple teachers are very intrigued. As there's a guy running around with a quirk tearing apart robots. And that sentence hasn't been said since, let's just say, All Might, or a certain other student, has been put in the UA High, or UA College, now. With that out of the way, everything does go somewhat normally. Or at least for how this Deku would go through these events, tearing apart robots and having a lot of fun. And really just showing off his incredible speed, power, and durability, along with even his skills. Yeah, this is what's going on, and you do actually have where people do start running away when the zero pointer does pop up, and you do actually have Deku, who after cleaving his legs through at least a set of robots, he does a stand there confused, looking at everybody. Right now Deku's adrenaline is high, and his blood's been pumping a lot, and he's just very surprised, him seeing the zero pointer. He's heard about this robot, no one's going after it, and people are just leaving it alone. So, this will give him a good test to see what he can really do with the power All Might gave him. Deku actually going to turn on the advance first, as he does rush in. Now, Deku thinks that there's nobody here, so he can be reckless and let loose his full power. However, as Deku actually is running and he's about to go leap off to attack the robot, he does hear a voice that is calling for help. Deku turning his head to see a girl. The moment he actually did start to put down weight to leap upwards into the air, Deku immediately went to go turn, stomping down his right leg and boosting forwards. As he blitzed the area where the girl she looked upwards, seeing the robot's giant foot coming down as all of a sudden she went to go close her eyes and it stopped. As she did go to actually open her eyes, she saw that Deku, he's staying there holding the zero pointer up with one hand as he actually is trying to bend down. Deku going to grab the rubble as he's going to toss it out of the way and tell her to move. Her just trying to use her hands to scurry onto the ground as Deku does go to bring up his other hand. Before he does start to stand back upwards and push the giant robot away. And everybody they were watching that. As Deku, he did go to do one more thing. He went to go turn on one for all wanting to see what he can really do with this. Him going to leap upwards into the air as he smashed the robot dead in the center of the chest. And Deku, he gets sent flying away after a large burst of wind pressure and the robot exploding. As Deku, he sent flying directly into a building before smashing down and having it crumble on him. As everybody, they were very shocked and confused. The ones who were far enough away not to suffer from the massive gust of wind or being blown away from it, they saw that guy fly away. Well, at least get blasted backwards. And then they're just thinking, that guy just blew up a zero pointer with one punch. And he caught its foot? That's insane. Now. You do actually have where All Might, he does come to the testing area. 
as whenever people are looking around for this guy, and some people are trying to help get him out of the rubble. You do have where All Might when he does step into the area, he does ask this young girl if she's alright. Her informing All Might that yes, yes she is, as she does point over to the rubble, talking about how but the guy is still trapped under there. And this girl's very surprised hearing that All Might, he's so nonchalantly just talking about how the boy will be alright. As you do have where Deku, he does come standing out of the rubble after throwing a large pile of it off of his body. And he does come standing back up. People do see that he's covered in some blood. And you do have where he does walk out with his pants somewhat torn up. And whenever Deku, he does start walking away, a lot of people, they're just staring at him. All that laughing and snickering he heard earlier, it's all gone. And there was one for All Might to call out for young Kyure, or, well, calling Deku by his first name. Deku actually looking up and turning around. All Might walking over and going to shake Deku's hand talking about how he's really glad that he did still come here. Thanks, All Might. I had time. Everybody looking around. The only two men they've ever seen with quirks are shaking hands. And they apparently know each other. A lot of people there are just going crazy with this idea. These two have met before. And this guy, he might be who All Might's training to be, well, the next symbol of peace. The next male with a quirk like him. Now, after that's all said and done, Deku, he does go to leave. Him picking up his shirt and shoes as he does get ready. Whenever everybody else does group back up and show up together, they're all very surprised to see that Deku actually came here. And Deku, he does try to explain a few things. Him actually being a lot more surprised to find that Momo came as well. Now, as everybody they were talking, Deku, he did actually somewhat stare at Momo for a second. The fact that she's here, it did actually surprise him. Genuinely, he didn't expect that. He heard she was going to try and go for the, well, you know, recommendation, but apparently not. So she chose to come here instead. He can respect that. Now, as Deku is actually staying there, he does look down at his shirt. As he does just go to run his hand over, one of the wounds covering his arm. As he does ask Momo if she can make him a towel. Hmm? Uh, sure. Her handing one over to him as Deku does start to wipe off all the blood. And they're all kind of just staring at him. As Deku, whenever he actually does go to wipe himself down, he does just somewhat just go to drop the towel. Him throwing it away in a trash can before going to put his shirt back on. When they do try to ask if he's not going to try to bandage his injuries or if he doesn't need a first aid kit, Deku just talks about how he's going to be fine. And how these little cuts and scrapes are really nothing to write home about. Now, Deku, he actually does ask if him and Momo can talk privately for a minute. As all of them, they do somewhat freeze. And Momo, after Deku does grab her by her hand, he does pull her away. Now, Deku, he does pull Momo aside to try and talk to her about the Kangen Annihilation matches, and exactly what she might have heard about. Hmm? I, I didn't hear about very much. My father, he hasn't told me anything. Hmm. I see. Well, that's annoying. Then I guess I'll show, I shall explain it to all of you. Hmm? All of us? Yes. If I'm going to show you what you can strive to do and what type of things you can do with training, the King and Annihilation matches I believe will be the best thing for you all to see. Different ways men have integrated different skill sets into their styles. And from what I understand, these type of men I'll be facing off against, they have quirks. So, It'd be best for everybody if we were all there to see it. Now, Momo, she's very confused. 
However, after at least Deku does sit everyone down and explain this to all of them after they get to Momo's house, it's very surprising. The rich are using men with powers to decide how the hierarchy goes. They don't fully understand what Deku's talking about, but just the entire premise of it sounds crazy. No. Deku, after everything is said and done and set up, you do have where he and the girls, as I'll just say, well, they do eventually board onto the ship or boat where everything's being held. Them on the cruise liner, rather than the old broken down ship. And Deku, whenever everyone is talking and they're on the boat, him and Mr. Yeruzu, they do stick close to one another. Deku is his fighter. And right now, whenever Deku, he does sit down at the table, he does look around. As right now, him and the girls are sitting down to eat at a table reserved for Mr. Yorozu and his guest. And while Deku is sitting down, he actually has turned his head. He does have a plate of meat in front of him. However, he can't help but stare over at his uncle as he's currently sitting down with a man he doesn't recognize, and he does have his mother and his little sister over there. It does seem to be very strange. And whenever somebody does ask Deku exactly what's wrong, Deku, he does look back over at them. Hmm? Oh. It's nothing. Kendo. I just... I'm looking over towards my uncle. Your uncle? Yeah, he's here, along with my mother and my little sister. You have a sister? That'd be what Mina does say. As she does ask if Deku's sister is well girly or not really like how Deku is. And as Mina is talking, you do have where she does walk over. It's very surprising. Yuya walks over, and she does see her brother. Whenever Mina does turn and see this girl that's probably about around the age of 15 or 16, she does should at least hold her hand, asking if she would happen to be his sister. Now, Yuya does look down, before looking back up, asking if she's really one of the people her brother spends most of his time around. Huh? Are you serious? I see that my elder brother right here, he's gathered himself a little bit of a harem. How disappointing. I see that he couldn't find any strong woman. Hmm. Brother. Her turning to Izuku. And Deku does look over at her. Her saying, using her quirk mind reading, that Deku, he will be a failure to their clan. And that if he doesn't find a strong woman, then he will not fulfill his role as a cure. Now, she does turn around and walk away. As Deku, he does just stare at his sister as she does walk away. Mina, turning around, asks exactly what was that. Hmm? She's like a regular cure. She has a quirk too. Apparently she doesn't like that all of you spend time around me. So she's a yandere? No. I don't know how to describe her. She's always been neglectful of her emotions. Like how I used to be. Except with her, she doesn't have the full removal. She can push past 90%. I don't remember the exact number. She's put very close in terms of power to me. But even then with her quirk, you don't want to know what she said. Now, all of them are very confused. Learning that Deku's sister can apparently read minds. And that's kind of terrifying. So you have a girl who she can cross concrete, run very fast, is very durable, and can read minds, and most likely, if she wanted to, lobotomize you by turning your brain inside out. That's horrifying to think about. 
especially because you wouldn't think it just by looking at her. Now, eventually they do arrive at the island, where the Kangan Annihilation matches are being held. And right now, the, well, spots are being reserved. As Deku, upon his first entry, he's introduced. He is a Zuku Kure. He's representing the Yairozu Corporation. And many people hearing that last name, Kure, Kure, they're very much on guard. As Deku does stand there in the ring with his opponents, the large man, he's staying there looking at Deku. And his calm expression did somewhat change to either a bit more of rage or a bit more of seriousness. He knows that he can't hold back against Deku. And right now, he's going to go all out. As the moment the match does begin, the man rushes towards and tries to attack Deku. As I believe that that is a good point to leave this what if off of. And I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.